Uh, we are going to talk about Cogito. Uh, if I say doing the presentation Cogito is the same thing, we just didn't settle on the <laughs> pronunciation yet. So it's about building intelligent serverless applications. Uh, I'm Dominic Hanak. Uh, I'm a quality engineer at Red Hat. Uh, uh, we work as a quality engineer on this project. And this is Marian. I'm Marian. I've been in Red Hat for more than five years, and I've been working mainly on GBPM and rules, and now on Cogito. Yeah, so we in Red Hat, we collaborate closely with engineering, so that's why we kind of stepped up and said, let's give up, let's, uh, let's have a promotion of our project. Uh, and we are here to give you a talk about Cogito. So, the uh, goals of today talk, of this talk is uh, are following. So, we want you to understand how the Cogito project can be used to build these intelligent applications. Uh, we want you to understand the motivation for Cogito. Uh, and the needs uh, and why we why the Cogito was started uh, and why is like a next step uh, on the traditional JBPM <coughs> and we want to showcase the developer experience using Cogito to build the applications. So we want to give you this. So let's start with a short recap. Uh, so this is the business process management theorem, but no, we won't go into that. Uh, we will just briefly uh, show you what was the leg legacy BPM and like, so you can understand the transition. So as you may know, uh, this is basically the BPM and cycle. You analyze your business, you create processes, write them down, then you design them, implement them. Then you deploy that, you can monitor and optimize. Okay, so you just want to have your business and you want to see how it performs and optimize your processes based on that. Yeah, so here's the picture, just to... Uh, show you better. It's, it's basically it's a never-ending process. It goes over and over again, and yeah. So the tradition of BPM basically, uh, we uh, are working in JBPM and rules communities. Anyone familiar with them? All right, cool. See some hands. <laughs> That's good. So uh, JBPM and rules solve the tradition of BPM. Uh, Basically, we provide a uh, large business process suite, uh, basically one big monolithic application where you have engine, where you have designers uh, for your processes, where you have uh, monitoring capabilities. Uh, you know. Basically, it's very heavyweight. Uh, it's hard to scale, like not easily scalable because uh, only way you can scale it is using more key servers. And the development cycle is kind of long, so it's not agile. And Agile is very popular nowadays. So that's the basis uh, you should understand before we move to Cogito. So just to show a picture how it worked before, uh, you had business process suite, right? Uh, where you design things, uh, then you deploy the processes on key servers, where you basically have the execution, and you can connect databases. But you can sc scale only here in this area, right? So. Oh, it has the points. Nice. Oh, so you can only scale to the right and left here. And you have big monolithic application at the top. So that's not really nice. So uh, that's why we have Cogito. Or our great engineers came up with Cogito. So uh, you want to take this one? Yeah. OK, sure. great. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we did with Cogito? Or what we are trying to achieve here is that uh, since the previous application or previous deployment wasn't really uh, well built for cloud, let's say you had everything in this uh, what we call key server, so this is the execution part. And uh, if you want to, if you wanted to probably, uh, for example, scale uh, uh, scale our application to uh, serve more requests or to better balance the load you would be scaling everything which was in size. So it was, as Dominic said, it was pretty monolithic. And what we are trying to achieve with Cogito is that uh, it is uh, already designed with cloud in mind as a set of microservices. So basically the key server you saw is basically split into parts. Uh, each part has its own responsibility. One, uh, for example, does the execution itself. The other one is doing the, what we call in the JBPM uh, auditing. So basically, uh, what happened and when. 
and the other parts uh, which handle, for example, timers, there is also another microservice, uh, microservice for, the, for that. Uh, so that's the first thing. Uh, of course, uh, if you split something into these uh, components, it means also that you can scale independently every part of your application. So, for example, if you want to, uh, if you don't, uh, for example, for auditing, you generally don't need uh, scalability, let's say. The main point of scale, uh, scalability or where you want to scale is uh, in the execution part. So now you are just scaling the execution part. For example, you don't use uh, timers uh, in your uh, business processes, for example, or in your automation in general, and you don't need to scale that. So you, you don't even have to deploy it. Uh, whereas in JBPM uh, version 7, if you scale basically the key server as a whole uh, unit, you would be scaling also this timer service and uh, other things you don't need. And also the other thing is uh, that meaning that uh, it's now, I would say, from the developer point of view, from the, the developer point of view of Cogito, it's better organized for us, so we can also work more in agile way, uh, agile way and streamlined. Uh, we, we also have streamlined development, I would say, because right now it's not, uh, as I said, a big, just one monolithic application. You can work more independently on different parts of, of the uh, technology itself. Yeah, we will show you. But if you compare it to the previous one where you first deployed, the, you have your suit, you design something there, uh, there is like really zero cap, like there is not, not really nice uh, versioning system there or uh, the collaboration is really hard. Uh, with Kogito, the, edge, the development is really streamlined. You can easily integrate it with any GitHub or Git versioning system. So it really uh, helps you as a developer to go like rocket speed with your application. Yeah, and when it comes to some new features, for example, for Cogito, we are also investigating a possibility of serverless workflow, which means if you want, for example, AWS Lambdas or something like that, or function as a service. So this is what will possibly be, or will be made possible by Cogito, probably. Uh, and the final part, which uh, uh, is pretty big also for Cogito, it means that uh, now it's completely domain-based, so we no longer interact, for example, with your uh, business process as a, uh, as, a, uh, as a map, for example, where you have a, uh, for your variables, so let's say uh, you have a, a travel agency and you have, uh, as a process variables, uh, you would have, uh, for, this, uh, for your pro business process, the process variables would be mapped as a simple map, so key and value store. Now it's a uh, uh, domain based, so it means that each process instance has its own uh, basically object, which is no longer named uh, hash map, for example, or it's, it's not a hash map, but it's one uh, specific object in case of, a, for example, your travel process, which we'll see in, the, in a minute, it's called just the travel. And so we are directly interacting with, uh, with the domain you are uh, automating. So uh, basically, uh, how does the architecture look like on Cogito, uh, roughly? Uh, basically, the only part which you need or why you are building your Cogito app is uh, the execution <coughs> part. Uh, so uh, you have uh, your Cogito microservice. Uh, we will talk about it. Uh, we will talk uh, about it later, how it's built and what does it run on and so on. So basically, uh, you can even have uh, your decision or process or planning uh, as a service, which means it usually uses also InfiniSpan as a data store, so it has persistence, it has some state to it. Or you can probably, you may decide that, okay, I don't need any state, I just need to quickly make decisions, run some uh, rules and so on, so I don't need persistence, so in that case it will be acting like a function show. So if you need to do a decision, it will quickly spin a pod, uh, not use the persistence at all, uh, do the decision, uh, reply with a request, uh, uh, reply with a response, and that's it. Yeah. So let's say you would let's plan a simple service for your business where you wanted to decide which employee gets bonus and which not. So you write down some simple law. You write down a simple process with one gateway. Like if it's his, his effort, like uh, he he can get a bonus, he shouldn't get a bonus based on some rules, and they just bundle that using Cogito extension for 
workers and you will have your service. And that's all you need. One, it has one state, you run it up, or you ask him, can this employee get a bonus? No, it won't say yes or no, and that's all. It's really simple and fast. Yeah, so, uh, and then you can start building your uh, infrastructure. So, in case you probably, uh, in case you need, for example, uh, auditing, so you want to know what is going on with your processes, when some, uh, when uh, and who, da who did, for example, who, who completed the human task or did something with your process or in a d uh, with the domain object uh, in general, you can also spin uh, in the uh, data index service. We call it data index service, which uh, usually, uh, when something happens in your execution environment, uh, it emits events and uh, store it in uh, InfiniSpan, and then we have uh, GraphQL. Uh, API, so you can query uh, what you want. For, so basically, if you know JVPM version 7 or rules, this is basically the audit log uh, for uh, the Cogito. Next thing you can do, if you, for example, use timers, uh, what are timers? If you know, uh, if you don't know, it's something uh, in your process, for example, if you are uh, painting a body of a car and you need to wait a little bit uh, to, uh, so it can dry out, then you can employ timers. So, okay, now in the in our process of building a car, I need to wait, for example, 30 minutes or more to uh, let the paint uh, dry out. So you can, if, if you are using the timers again, uh, you can spin uh, another microservice for timers. If you don't use it, you do, don't even need to have it uh, deployed on your OpenShift. Next uh, part, uh, which we also plan to have. Uh, is uh, some basically UI or process management it was called in uh, JPPM7 basically or authoring uh, where you could uh, for example run uh, run your processes through UI so we would click start this process instance start another process instance uh, show me uh, when when was it starting and so on so basically this is the UI part and uh, this uh, inbox means that this is basically a task inbox, so it's uh, like, a, again, uh, some management service for, uh, for human tasks. So, uh, again, UI, which uh, usually connects to the execution uh, part, and uh, you can control to claim tasks, complete them, and so on. And also, uh, yeah, of course, uh, finally, uh, as with previous uh, JPPM 7 deployment, you, you can also use SSO for uh, managing authentication of all these services. The important yeah. part about you want, uh, that's mine now, but the important part about this is that uh, all you need is your domain, and you don't need these other things if you don't want to. You can easily plug it in. Uh, I mean, if your business suddenly needs uh, some monitoring, some index service, you will plug it in, but your application still stays the same. So it's very easy, uh, it's scalable, yeah. All right, so uh, let's talk about the tooling for a bit. So when I say tooling, I mean uh, design capabilities like uh, B B BPM and editors, DM and editors, editors, something where you can easily uh, model your processes or develop rules. So in old life, we had to be BPMS suit, so it's a very huge application. Uh, uh, that covers full business process business management cycle, so you can analyze, like uh, design, implement, deploy, run, and also monitor. So yeah, these applications are slow. Uh, in case you wanted to mo just model a process, you still needed the whole application. So it's not really good. Uh, these applications tend to be slow because they are huge web applications. So uh, in old life, that it's like this: you have one business suit, uh, you can you can do everything inside. But what if you just wanted to uh, fix uh, some business process that some other developer did? What would you do? So uh, with Cogito, we want to bring a new life of tooling. Uh, basically, these editors sh are now streamlined as a microservices. Uh, that means that you should probably you go to I don't know uh, you go to web page. Uh, some URL and it will open your editor where you can import stuff. You can import the business processes and edit them, download them, uh, possibly even directly moving them to GitHub and commit something to your versioning system if you want. So with tooling uh, for Cogito, we are, we are talking about something called omnichannel support. 
uh, where basically we would like to provide so uh, we would like to provide different channels for you developers so you can easily work with the processes and other assets that you need with uh, that you need for your domain so uh, currently we uh, target uh, VS Code. Uh, we provide some VS Code extensions where you can open BPMN files and DMN files and uh, instead of uh, plain XML view, you will see the editor and you can work with the uh, process and model it, etc. So that's the first channel. Uh, then we also want to provide browser extensions. Uh, for example, current, uh, we are at alpha stage right now, but uh, we provide GitHub integration where uh, if you install this extension, you, will, you can observe and modify these processes directly inside the GitHub. So we inject the editors inside GitHub, and when you open a BPMN file or DMN file on GitHub, you will see the editor. And you can actually directly model it uh, on GitHub. Uh, you can change variables, edit it the way you like, and then submit a pull request easily. So that's very nice. So uh, next channel for us is online editor. Uh, I will show you after when we do the, when we will be showcasing the demo. And uh, I'll mention desktop here, but uh, that's really in a stages of planning and maybe uh, not worth mentioning at all. But uh, when I say only channel, the idea is that uh, whatever channel you choose from this, uh, you will be able to work uh, together with, like you will be able to. Uh, model something in online editor and then use the VX collection as well. So just the developer experience, we, are, we plan to make it really streamlined between these extensions. So whatever channel you choose, you will get the same experience. So uh, what are the advantages of this approach? Uh, it's lightweight, so you will have only business process modeling if you want, only DMN modeling if you want. Uh, it's fast. Uh, compared to previous, uh, the previous uh, version, the version seven, the large application, this this is really fast. You just open VS Code Marketplace, you install the extension, and you are ready to model. You don't need to deploy application on EAP, uh, wait for it to load up, then plug in some other services. So you can, this is really fast. Yeah, one installation that should be together. But yeah, it's really easy. Also, it will be on Marketplace, so. Uh, Browsers have marketplaces, VS Code has marketplaces, so you just install it and you are ready to go. Uh, and the battle proven, well, the editors itself are from version seven. So we had to do some, we did some modifications on the on our on the code side to let them run client side. So, uh, but it is still the same editor. So we, the version seven editors are really well tested. They have been around for some years. So. Basically, we are just letting you use this battle program editor in different channels. So, yeah, it's well tested, I would say. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, that we want to uh, give you the best developer experience possible, so these channels are interconnected. So, uh, there is some, pro for example, there is a link if you model something in, uh, if you open the uh, editor inside GitHub. Using the extension, you can directly link yourself to the online editor, we remodel it, change it, and link back again. So, just some nice features that we want to add. All right. So, what is the current state? Current state of the tooling is that we currently offer BPM and DMN modeling extensions. So, you can check the releases on the URL. Uh, there is also online editor currently with BPM and DMN capabilities. And I'm just mentioning that they are both written in the, the language we use is React and TypeScript. So if you are fans of these languages, come and contribute. You will, you will be welcomed. So yeah, that's about the tooling. And now I'll hand it over to Marian, who will be talking about runtimes. Which is <coughs> so after you have your uh, assets de uh, designed, uh, for example, the process, de uh, process uh, definition and so on, it's time to run them. So for t uh, as a technology stack, uh, we currently use, like for running, of course, Java, so we are staying on Java. Then for uh, execution environment, let's say, or for frameworks, uh, we use Quarkus. Uh, we also support uh, native 
images in Quarkus and Spring Boot. The thing is that for Qu uh, Quarkus we have uh, custom uh, Quarkus extension, uh, Cogito uh, extension for it, and if you are using Spring Boot, uh, there is a sp uh, uh, there is a Cogito Maven plugin who, uh, which does the, basically the same thing uh, with regard to code generation and so on. So that's for running. For interacting, let's say, between services and for, uh, for persistence, we use InfiniSpan as a data store, so we no longer use uh, relational databases. Uh, then for uh, eventing or like uh, propagating events from the, from the Cogito app itself, we use Kafka, and uh, for querying them uh, from the data index service, we uh, decided to go uh, the GraphQL way, so uh, it should be also pretty fast. Uh, when it comes to uh, other new technologies, for example, for uh, timer service, we use reactive streams. So we hope that this will solve uh, the issues which uh, are pretty common, for example, in business automation. When you have uh, thousands or ten thousands of processes and you have to trigger something uh, at a specified time. So, for example, you want to recalculate interest, for example, in a bank. Um, at the end of the month, or, uh, sometimes after midnight, we want to do it as fast as possible. Uh, you can quickly have uh, tens of thousands of timers waiting to get executed. So this was a pretty tough job for JPPM, for example, on version 7. Uh, it was manageable, but it took some time, and we uh, hope that uh, using of reactive streams and everything, uh, having asynchronous will solve these problems. Uh, for example, in uh, job service. And uh, then uh, from the way we are building uh, your app, once you design your process definition and your assets, so decisions and so on, we heavily depend on code generation, which means that in order, to, uh, in order, in order for your application to be domain-based, so you don't want to interact with just uh, key and values, uh, keys and values. You want to directly interact. If I am doing, for example, uh, if I am booking flights, you want to interact with flights. If you are, uh, if I, you are uh, doing uh, booking.com, for example, you want to interact with bookings or with hotels and so on. So uh, everything is uh, extracted from the process definition and from your assets, and then uh, domain is basically uh, generated from it. So if you want to start developing the application or developing your Cogito app, uh, we have a uh, few possibilities. So links will be in, uh, at the end of the presentation, but uh, first you can explore our Cogito examples repository where we have some examples uh, uh, of uh, really simple and re uh, applications which can be uh, really run quickly. And then you can decide if you want to go the Quarkus way or the Spring Boot way, basically. Uh, so you either uh, use Quarkus Cogito extension or Spring Boot together with the uh, Cogito ma uh, Maven plugin. <coughs> so for example, in Quarkus, uh, you can just uh, call this Maven command, which will add you the Cogito extensions, and it will uh, create, a, basically, a new project for you. And yeah, the application is uh, created. So now, I think we can move to the demo. Uh, so of course we won't be building the application from scratch here, uh, because it takes obviously some time to design your process and so on. So we will be showcasing the uh, Cogito Travel Agency. Uh, one, I think it's the second version, which means that we will also have a persistence uh, uh, running. So what the domain? Uh, domain for the travel agency is that you have a trip, so that's basically your travel somewhere. You have traveler, you have a hotel where you can stay, flight, and address which is basically uh, connected with uh, trip. Thing. Yeah, so the process starts like that. You, you generate your application, is, uh, your skeleton of application using that command in previous slides. And the first thing you need to uh, understand is like what, what business am I working for? So if I want to do a travel agency, I will probably look at some trips, with some travelers, with some hotels, maybe flights, I don't know, buses. But let's keep it simple in, in the example. So you, you just make your domain models. So this is like plain no Java objects. You just uh, 
yeah. write some Java classes, yeah. uh, you add the attributes, uh, so getter setters. And basically, that's, that's your domain. Yes. The other thing is you can apply some decisions. So basically, uh, they, they are usually, with Cogito, they are backed up by rules. So uh, you can opt for uh, directly the DRL files, or in this case, it will be the decision table, or you can uh, run DMN and so on. So this will be used for uh, deciding if a traveler needs a visa uh, application, or if, if uh, the traveler needs uh, to apply for a visa, uh, depending on the country where they uh, travel to. And then you start basically designing your process definitions. So, yeah, and our process definition will be uh, like this. So at first we will input some trip data, which means you will uh, fill a simple application that or a simple form where you uh, say who you are, your, contact, uh, your contacts, uh, where do you want to travel, when, and so on. Then uh, the application will try to uh, decide or uh, it will decide if you need a visa basi uh, based on your nationality or citizenship mm -hmm. and the uh, country where you are traveling. Then uh, if you need uh, a visa then a uh, human task will be created for somebody, let's say somebody in the travel, uh, in the travel agency or uh, somewhere which will either apply you or uh, apply the visa or they will just cancel your stay, let's say. And then you can proceed to booking hotel and flight. And basically the last thing is just, you can just confirm travel. So this is like a really basic uh, process definition. So yeah, well, we, we just right now we can application. show the application. So I will, yeah, I will directly open the process definition. Of uh, this is the VS Code, it has the uh, extension for modeling installed, so when you open the process you can see it like this. Uh, the editor is almost full features, we are working on adding more features, but uh, you can add properties, you can modify the, the task if you want, uh, and you can work inside the application. So while you are working with your domain models and editing the services, etc., uh, you don't need some other application for editing the processes as well. You can just directly edit them in here inside the, the extension. So this is just the process designer directly in the VS Code. Then we can, yeah, uh, here is the basic, uh, process definition. So his, here is the visa check. Then uh, basically you, uh, if you need a visa, you can apply for it. If you don't need, you just uh, progress uh, further. And then there is a uh, booking of flight and booking of hotel and confirming the travel. These two things are also sub-processes which we have here, which are really advanced. Yeah. It so it will just call a service to f book flight and book a hotel. Yeah, so basically that's it. And the services itself are defined here. So it's a really advanced uh, service as you can see. Uh, it's yes. basically a CDI bean which will be injected into your application and it will be automatically uh, found uh, and run uh, when, the, when the process is uh, uh, being run. And then uh, the domain itself, so we, here we have a traveler, trip, hotel and so on and so on. So basically that's your application and Finally, for, uh, for, the intelligence. for the decisions, I think I can. Uh, uh, for example, if you need to like open it from, but yeah, you don't need to open it. Open it's just it. the basic, I just basic want to show that rules, like yeah. when user or when the traveler is from, let's say, Poland and he wants to go to England, to uh, America, he needs visa, right? So the service just returns that and. Uh, so it's using the rules, so it's a decision table format uh, where you have some condition, action, and some input data so which you base on the decision. So, yeah, so basically yeah. here it is. Finally. So uh, we are not that, yet if, uh, that ready for production as you can see, as we currently only know if Polish people can apply for visa or not, but basically it works. Uh, so far we don't need visa for UK. 
until the end of the month, probably. Uh, then, uh, basically, uh, this is just a, a decision table. You may know, but basically, it means that very, very, when there is a trip, and trip is to the, the one of the, these countries, and there is a traveler who is of this nationality, then we will just decide if he needs or he doesn't need a visa. Basically, that's it. So back to the VS code. And right now, we can just show the application running on locally. So uh, so this is pretty normal commands. You just run it, compile Quarkus dev. So we get a dev server from Quarkus. And so you can see, yeah. It supports how to reload. Uh, so developing uh, this kind of uh, application is very much easier with Cogito. Okay, so uh, let's say it. we would found an issue in our rule file. Uh, so what we need to do is yeah. change uh, change the rule, fix it, and on, up on the reload, we will have the rule fixed and the application will be working again. And let's say we want to decide, we want to also uh, capture, I don't know, uh, some other attribute here in this table. We just change the, change the application and it reloads. Uh, it's like, you know, I, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, so, so basically, it's yeah, if you, you need to speed it up know, again, yeah, it does it for you. I think so if, you, if, you, yeah, if you know Quarkus uh, and the hot reloading stuff, it will be pretty sim uh, it will be, you will be pretty comfortable with it. So it works also here. So here we have uh, our traveler. This will directly post uh, basically a JSON file uh, to our service and it will create a new process instance, so a new instance of our stay. So let's say we want to first do without visa. So we are going to, so you see that no visa is required. So we are uh, already at task confirm travel. So we don't have to apply for visa again. And when I click details, it will directly uh, requ uh, do a get request to my service with the uh, number of the process instance of if, uh, read the ID of the process instance and retain the whole domain model basically or the whole domain for, uh, for my process. So you don't need to fetch this separately that if I have in the process definition uh, uh, as a separate variable, for example, hotel, you don't need to uh, pull it, uh, pull just the hotel flight and then travel and trip and yeah, so on. And everything is generated for you. So you just provide yeah. your domain models, your processes and uh, the cookies are extended to generate the, the rest of the endpoints for you. So basically... So you're, you're, not, you're not writing the rest for example, endpoints, they're generated. Okay, now let's say the flight 555 is uh, fully occupied so i will just quickly show the how the reloading so of course you i do now 666 and then i just refresh it and let's say we want to go the same way it should be, yeah, so it's already updated. So they're pretty basic stuff. And so this is basically a developer experience on local. Uh, I can quickly show the generated code. It's generated so it's not maybe that readable, but still you can, if you want, you can find it here in uh, target directory. So for example, for travels, we have a travels resource, which is generated. And basically you can see if I want to create a new process instance, so a new travel, it will directly post, uh, it will do a post request with the, with the travels model and it will create a, basically a new process uh, instance. And this travels model is here. Yeah, so we have traveler, hotel, trip and flight there. Um, yeah. Uh, so this to the local, yeah, you can then package the application as normal. Uh, so you will have uh, your own executable jar of the application and then you can start deploying it to OpenShift. And that's where the fun begins. Um, so we can try to, as if we still have some time, I can try to deploy our application, which is, basi uh, which is uh, the same application which I have on local, but I already have it on GitHub. So we have a cogito operator there. 
uh, which uh, will basically do as to I build of your application, then repackage it into the runtime image. So it's really lightweight and run it on OpenShift. Um, and we have also Cogito CLI, uh, which means uh, is a CLI uh, uh, you can use uh, with this uh, command. You can create directly your new project, which will pre-install the operator in your project or in your namespace on uh, OpenShift. And then we have uh, some commands there to quickly deploy your service, delete service, delete project, or install, uh, for example, infrastructure. If you need infinite span, job service, and so on. So I will start creating this. Let's say we want to create a new project. Project has been created. And by the way, if something doesn't work, don't blame me. Blame guy over there who wrote it. <laughs> but well, it works. yeah, it, wor it just works <coughs> as always. And now, yeah, we have a project here. You can already see that the deployments are coming, which means we have a Kajit operator already starting there. Yeah, so it's uh, basically the infrastructure or the uh, environment is being installed, so you can deploy the application there. And <coughs> if I go back to <coughs> here, yeah, so it's, it's starting yeah. up. Yeah. So, sorry, just one go thing on. that we didn't mention is, as you've seen the hot world, uh, you've seen that the application spins up really fast once you have it compiled, so uh, in case you, want, you are running into the high traffic of your service, you can just spin up another hundred one like this, so that's like a very good feature of Cogito as well. Okay, and now we can also show the Cogito CLI. Uh, so basically, these are the commands you have uh, uh, you have so the basically it's a uh, creating new project use project display the current use project so pretty easy uh, you can also do for example if you don't know what's going on uh, what's going as an argument here you can uh, input a bunch of parameters there so you can create uh, tell it from which branch you want to deploy your application and so on so I think already should be it should be yeah everything is basically running we have infinite span operator for infinite span if we need it kick low operator and so on so right now we can start and try to deploy our application so uh, yeah so basically we are deploying the service which will be called travel agency uh, from this URL uh, directory is just because we have different uh, uh, Maven modules there, so we want to build this uh, this path. So version <coughs> c zero 02. I will just delete the project because I want to do it in the currently selected project. Yeah, and this is just the environment variable to speed things up. I'm providing just the, our internal Maven mirror to be able to build it more uh, quickly. <coughs> Uh, this is just a normal Maven uh, central mirror we have there. Uh, branch will be DevConf, and I want to install InfinSpan. So that's it. And now, hopefully, yeah, so application was created. We can, cre we can briefly check it. Uh, for example, da -da 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 -da. we should have, yeah, we already have a builder there which will try to build our application. It may take some time, but yeah, so it's already running. <coughs> and while it's running, we can probably move on because it may take a few minutes. Uh, so we, as you can see, the Cogito CI is pretty uh, easy. And uh, you, can of, you can, of course, uh, deploy your application uh, via normal ODO or o OC commands, but we encourage you to try the Cogito, uh, Cogito CLI because it's much easier, I would say. And you have the power of operator there and so on. 
So, where you can find Cogito? Yeah, so this is basically a wrap up uh, of the showcase. Uh, you can find Cogito in these links. Uh, the slides should be shared, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah so maybe we'll you, can, you can take it and take a look. Uh, the example that we were showing uh, is again on GitHub, you can check it out. There are maybe I think six. Uh, but each part adds something new to the example, right? So for example, in second you have the instance by right, in third you have uh, maybe even the data index, or so not really sure, but check it out. And there are also other examples in this second repository. So uh, if you guys want to contribute, find us on GitHub. Uh, there's a key group uh, and search for Cogito projects, uh, Cogito repositories. Uh, there's quite a lot of them, so we don't link everyone. Just to go to the key group and type in Cogito to the search bar. You will see everything that is related to it. And uh, yeah, sorry. okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so now probably have a time for questions. Yeah, as you can see, the application is being deployed, so it's normal Maven run or normal Maven build. And afterwards, we should see the travel agency uh, runtime uh, pod running. Yeah. Slide missing synchronization. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. So, do you have any questions? Yeah. So, yeah. Now we have a lot of time for questions. So, uh, if if you didn't catch something or something wasn't really uh, well explained, so go ahead. And if you want to see more, in 30 minutes there will be another Cogito talk, uh, which will be uh, basically about the more advanced, if I'm not mistaken, example of the Cogito Travel Agency. So it will be more focused on cloud. So this was like more developer experience, how to get to the cloud, and now in 30 minutes it will be more uh, advanced, I would say. Yep. I did miss the beginning of the presentation. Okay. What's the, what's the value proposition of Cogito? Yeah. Uh, okay, so the question mm -hmm. was that, uh, what's the value proposition of Cogito? So you wanna answer? Or uh, oh, sorry. Should I? Uh, you can. Basically, we can show you the basically this slide. So before uh, we had the JPPM versions, or right now we also have JPPM version seven, which is based on if you do work the, with it, uh, which is based mainly the execution power of key server, which runs on EAP. It's pretty um, like heavyweight application, and the biggest I would say. Uh, like uh, biggest drawback is that if you want to scale uh, just uh, part of your runtime and you have one key server, you have to scale all the uh, whole key server, which is a big uh, EAP application, let's say. So for example, if you don't use the timers in your process definitions, you don't need timer service usually, but you are basically, s the code is there, it's not maybe like running, but you are still scaling the whole key server. What we are trying to achieve with Cogito is that you can basically build your application in pieces or your automation uh, in pieces. So for example, if you don't need uh, timers, you don't need to even have it because it's a separate microservice now. That's one thing. For example, if you don't need auditing, so you don't need uh, to know what has happened to your processes, for example, or what was the history of uh, process execution, uh, you can uh, also shut it down, for example. So I would say that, uh, yeah, and another part is other than the, it being like now highly scalable so you can scale various parts of your application, now it is also domain-based. So before you were posting where you were issuing the pull request, uh, where you were issuing the request to your service for, to key server, it had to be generic. So uh, it was basically a JSON or XML file where you had a key and value, key and value, key and value. I want to send this to my process. Now, it's, uh, since we are uh, depending on uh, code generation, now it's uh, basically everything domain-based. So we are not, uh, not no longer interacting with maps and key values, but you are directly posting there, for example, in this case, uh, travel, directly like travel uh, JSON object. And you also get the travel JSON object back. So you don't have to parse it, your UI can be also tailored to specific uh, domain. So I think that's, that's the biggest, uh, biggest uh, like achievement here. Yeah. And yeah, just to quickly show you. Yeah, normal processes, just domain. 
Yeah, uh, this is the proposed Cogito, let's say, architecture roughly, and this is how it was before. So basically you could, you had one big UI usually, which was also running on uh, EAP, it was called uh, Workbench, or it's called Workbench. And then you were just deploying everything to key servers, which could share the database or, or they were just split. But basically you could uh, scale only these, uh, these microservices. Uh, it w yeah, it, it's not uh, microservice, but you could just uh, scale the key servers basically, which could take a lot of uh, processing power and memory and so on. Okay. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for attention. We still have 10 minutes, so if you wanna. Can you okay. show the last code that was the JT? Ah, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, so it's running already. And we can share with the code that was created. Okay, and now. Networking routes. <coughs> yeah, so here is our application. So basically it's the same application, but now running on OpenShift. Yeah, maybe if you want to see, you can show the uh, travels endpoint. Uh, you know. Yeah. It should be good also here. Yeah. So basically this is the mm, JSON which was returned. I will just show it in Firefox probably because it has better indentation. <coughs> yeah. So here we can see that we directly received the JSON. This is uh, just an ID of the process instance. Uh, there is no flight yet. Uh, trip is to New York. Uh, hotel is not assigned yet. And here are the information of travelers. So there is no like the name of the variable and the value of the variable and so on. Basically, yeah, so it's just uh, really a JSON object tailored for your domain. Yeah, this maybe uh, kind of extends uh, answer to your question that uh, in previously you would have a process ID and you would, you would basically get the process, like the whole definition of the process instance, but here you, just, you, have, you get uh, the domain you actually want. So instead of uh, getting the process, uh, process instance definition in a JSON format and extracting the variables from the definition and then, do, then working with them and monitoring them, checking what happened in the process, you just have your domain. So it's a kind of abstraction. Okay. All right, so are there uh, no more questions? Okay, thank you very much.